Hi, this is Angel Flores and in this video we will talk about the heart and the goal of food science and technology, the food processing and preservation. Before defining and knowing the importance of food processing and preservation, let's first know its roots or where it started. Alamin muna natin kung saan sila nanggaling o saan sila hinugot. According to Sonido, Chavez, and De Leon, the beginning of food preservation and processing must have run parallel to man's evolution and with the eventual development of groupings and communities. Imagine how our ancestors survived. Yung mga hunter na nakatira sa mga kweba, marahil or for sure they did something para madala nila yung nahunt nila doon sa tinitirhan nila. And we can also think or imagine how they preserved it para may makain pa rin sila sa panahon na wala o hindi sila makapaghunt. Para sa mga lugar na may snow, they would have kept their food in ice. Para naman sa mga may init na lugar, they would have let their food sand dry. But did you know that there are many improvements on the ancient ways of preserving food were triggered by the need to feed armies at war? It was in the early 19th century when Napoleon Bonaparte saw the need for food with extended shelf life for his army. Napansin niya kasi na marami ang namamatay sa kanyang army hindi dahil natamaan ng bala or napana o dahil sa inkwentro pero dahil sa food poisoning. Remember that wars would last for days, weeks, and even longer and so their food gets spoiled. With this event, he announced na kung sino ang makapag-imbak o makakapag-preserve ng pagkain for his army, ay bibigyan niya ng price na 12,000 francs, which is equivalent ngayon to almost 650,000 pesos. At, nanguha, at nakuha nga ito ni Nicholas Upper. He has worked as a chef and once a brewer. And with this experience of working in food, he witnessed how it gets spoiled. After a series of experiments, he developed an approach to preserve meat by hermetic sealing and heat treatment. He put food in a hermetic sealed or airtight glass jar and simmer it in water. And this idea is called apertization. At ito rin yung naging idea ng canning process. Nicholas Appert actually coined as the father of canning industry. This in the subsequent wars and space explorations led to the development of more food processing and preservation technologies. Another thing with urges for the development and improvement of food processing and preservation and even food itself is the Malthusian theory of population. Sinasabi ng tsuryang ito na mas bibilis na dami ang tao kaysa supply ng pagkain. Kaya ginagawa ng paraan ng ating mga scientists and technologists para salungatin ito at nagkaroon ng balanse sa bilang ng tao at supply ng pagkain. Increased agricultural production is achieved with new variants, high-yielding varieties, better irrigation, better farm and husbandry practices, aquaculture, biotechnologies, and other new applications of basic sciences. Pero lahat ng ito, pati na ang efforts ng mga scientists and technologists ay magiging useless kung hindi mapreserve after harvest. Kagaya naman na sa balita tungkol sa oversupply of some of our crops. Therefore, the need to process and preserve this produce is of use. So, alam na natin ngayon kung saan ang galing ang food processing and preservation. Ngayon naman, let's define and know their importance. Food preservation. It has two words. Food, pagkain, and preservation na may root word na preserve, which is to keep safe or retain quality and prevent decomposition. Kapag pagsamahin natin, ito ay ang pagpapanatili ng kalidad ng ating pagkain. 
So food preservation in broad sense of term refers to all measures taken to prevent food spoilage. At kapag napigilan natin ang pagkasira ng pagkain, we will then have that food for our future consumption. Food preservation involves all operations which are primarily designed to assure the safety and shelf life of the product. Why we preserve our food or why there is a need to preserve our food? There are a number of reasons which also tell the importance of food preservation. But I will share to you three main reasons of the food preservation and all the rest may fall under this. First is to overcome inappropriate planning in agriculture. The agricultural industry produces raw food materials in different sectors. Imagine this happening. We cannot stop our agriculture to do its role in our society. We cannot stop them of producing food materials. Malay ba nila na sa time na i-harvest na yung tanim nila ay magkakaroon ng pandemya or magkakabaha or will be harvested in a season na hindi naman sa hindi magagamit but in a season na less in demand. Most of our agricultural produce pa naman ay perishable, madaling masira. And this can be overcome by avoiding inappropriate areas, time, wood materials, as well as by increasing storage life using simple methods of preservation. Sa ganoong paraan, mababawasan kung hindi man maiiwasan ang oversupply ng raw food materials. Second reason is to produce value-added products. Value-added food products can give better quality food in terms of improved nutritional, functional, convenience, and sensory properties. Kung ang mga mamimili noon, okay na, basta masarap, or gusto nila kasi favorite nila ang color, pero ang, pero ang mga mamimili ngayon, hindi. They demand for healthier and more convenient food. Tinitignan na ang nutrition label ng products. No? Most of the consumers want instant. At ang katangiang ito ng produkto ay nakaka-apekto kung paano sila pinapreserve. Third reason is to provide variation in diet. Variation in diet is important, particularly in underdeveloped countries, to reduce reliance on a specific type of grain. Variety in diet brought about with the help of preserved food. For example, some Middle East countries do not grow any vegetables due to arid soil conditions. This shortcoming is overcome through the import of fresh and preserved fruits and vegetables. Other reasons of food preservation are food can be easily transportable. So food found only in one area can be made available to other places. It helps in economic development of the country. Food preservation is also profitable as a hobby as well as a means of livelihood. Iyan at marami pang ibang dahilan. Food processing. Again, we have food, pagkain, and processing which requires input and output. Food processing is used to transform raw ingredients, our input, into marketable food products, our output. Food processing refers to procedures or food preparation steps needed to change the food source into a form in which it will be presented to the end user. We have three categories of food processing, primary, secondary, and tertiary food processing. Primary food processing. This is the conversion of raw materials to food commodities. It is the first step taken to change a food sources to food, such as the slaughtering of animal from baka or cattle to beef. Another is the milling of grains from wheat to flour or from cassava to starch. Primary processing is also the immediate post-harvest procedure, the things we do after harvesting. Sinosort o hinihiwalay natin yung mga prutas base sa kulay, sizes, weight, level of maturity, or even those with effects. We also do trimming, washing, recooling, kahit yung pagpapahinom. Another example is what we do after catching fish. Nilalagay natin sa container na maraming ice. Those are all primary processing or primary processes. 
As we observed, hindi pa nakakain ang output ng primary food processing. Kapag yung karne niluto ko, ginawa kong adobo, that is secondary food processing. Secondary food processing is the process of using ingredients produced through primary food processing to create ready-to-eat food. The everyday process of creating food from ingredients that is ready to use. Sometimes, this is generally described as cooking method. Isa pa ang halimbawa nito ay ang paggamit ng harina sa paggawa ng tinapay. Yung tinapay na produced by baking can now be eaten. If that bread is processed in a large scale or pang maramihan, ito ngayon ay magiging tertiary processing. Tertiary food processing is the commercial production of what is commonly called processed food. Processed food refers to food products manufactured through tertiary processing. Now let's identify the stages or categories of food processing this rice has undergone. Palay ay giniling para magkaroon ng bigas at ang pagigiling or milling is a primary food processing. Bigas naman na naging kanin through cooking ay secondary food processing. Pero nakita natin dito sa picture na ang kanin ay napapak and in mass production, perhaps para ito sa airline. This has undergone tertiary processing. I just want you to know that in some references, food processing is subdivided in different categories. Primary food processing, food preservation, gaya ng halimbawa meat can be preserved by curing, canning, or freezing, and food manufacturing. Food manufacturing is a step further where the food may no longer have semblance to the original source such as hot dog, ice cream, fruit juices, or instant coffee. The following are the importance of food processing. First, food preservation is achieved by reducing risk of spoilage. Kapag titignan lang natin sa mesa yung karneng binili natin, wala tayong ginawa, eventually masisira lang yun. Walang nangyaring food preservation or walang nangyaring preservation. Dito rin papasok ang pangalawang kahalagahan ng pagproprosesyo ng pagkain. Food processing decreases waste stage of food. Kung yung karming binili ay pinases, ginawang tusino, chorizo, o kahit simpleng pagluluto lang, its shelf life would have been extended. Hindi siya nasira, hindi siya naging waste. Another thing we have to remember is that food processing is seasonal in nature. It's seasonal because we process more if raw materials are available. And most of our raw materials are also seasonal. Kaya maririnig natin kapag bumibili tayo sinasabi ng tindera o tindero na ay sir, wala po ngayon o mahal po yan ngayon kasi hindi niya season. No? During its season, especially its peak, nagkakaroon ng oversupply or excess food. And this excess food would be wasted if not processed. Pangalawa, food processing is seasonal because we processed what the consumers demand. Kagaya na lang sa season na in demand yung milk tea, marami rin nagsulputan na milk tea shops or stores. At dito rin papasok ang pangatlong kahalagahan ng food processing. It makes more varieties of food. Foods available in the market are made to satisfy and provide the needs and wants of the consumers. It also means that food could be available even if it is not in its season. Halimbawa, sa panahon na hindi na season ng mangga, tapos gustong-gusto mong kumain, pwede kang pumunta sa palengke or grocery stores at may makikita kang dried mangoes, pickled mangoes, meron ding jams, jellies, preserves, at marami pang ibang products. This also shows another importance of food processing. It increases the food supply. Alam kong alam mo na marami pang ibang dahilan na nagpapakita ng halaga ng pagpaprocess ng pagkain at ang mga nabanggit ko ay ilan lamang sa mga ito. In conclusion, food processing and preservation plays an important role for our survival. More and more technologies, processes, and products are made as our population grows and we demand for more of it. It also ensures food safety and security. So I hope this video has helped you in any way and that's it for today.